hey my loves welcome to my channel so if you've read the video description down i located so i moved abroad um i moved to the uk and um in this video i'm going to talk about my relocation journey so hop on um to start off so i moved to the uk um it was in march this year and i've been here for like eight months it's so unbelievable like i wouldn't <laughs> i wouldn't even imagine how quickly the eight months went by and so my journey how did i get to relocate to the uk did i relocate as a student um am i working i relocated to the uk for work so um i got successfully recruited into a role that was similar to the one i was doing back in kenya and if you're asking yourself, no, I'm not in healthcare, um, I'm in consulting, or you can say technology consulting. So I've been in this field for over, I think right now it's five years. I'm just, I'm just on the five year mark. So I got successfully recruited um, into a similar role in the UK. So if you've seen one of my previous videos, I, I talked about uh, the big four companies and how to get into big four. So yes, the role is still in big four and I'm gonna talk how my journey has been and the tips I would give you or eye openers I'd give anyone who is relocating abroad. Yeah, um, so. I started processing my visa around February, not February, I got my visa in February. So I started processing end of December towards January. Um, that's when I started arranging my papers, going for the TB test, you know, and just gathering all the requirements needed for me to apply for a UK visa, which per se, if you've tried it, you know, it's a lot. So I started with that and also there's bits to do with um, with like the financial aspect of it, you know. So in December, then I applied in January and um, chose the high priority processing route because that's what my employer was willing to pay for. Yes, all the relocation costs were reimbursed by the employer. They were not paid upfront, but they were reimbursed. So all the costs were but I had to pay for my plane ticket from my pocket, which wasn't paid back to me by the, or reimbursed by the employer, yeah. So after five days, I got my visa and then that's when I started looking for flights, you know. And then because it was just three weeks to me, um, less than I got like um, my visa around, I think I applied late January because I think I got the the visa end of January and I needed to travel end of February or early March before because my reporting date was like the 6th of March so I needed to be here the first week of March you know so I did within five days I got my visa and then I started looking for plane tickets and it was less than a month so the prices were so high I was thinking about the like I would say the direct flight but just looking at the prices it wasn't making sense for me or I would say I couldn't afford a direct flight so I decided to go with Emirates that had reasonable prices and yeah we we it was around 20 hours i'm saying we because um i traveled with my friend she got her visa at the same time she was reporting the same date you know luck comes in so many forms you know so i traveled together we're in dubai um i think i have a photo of me at the airport somewhere on the screen and then um i got to hit through <laughs> then now i would say the chaos started just queuing at the immigration you know like i get um i don't know flights just scare me i'm not someone who finds them fun i just find them as a way for me to get somewhere and i have to get through it and this being my first international flight my fat, first long flight it was scary i would say it was scary for me it was no longer enjoyable it was just that tenuous 
you need to get to this flight so you can get to your location. There's no other way. So I think for me, I tolerated the entire journey. I couldn't even eat. The food looked amazing, but I was mainly on fluids. So them making me queue in Heathrow for almost more than two hours was just was just stressful, you know, because we landed at around 2 p.m. We finished everything in the airport by around 4.30 p.m. And then we needed to get cabs because we, we even forgot that we need to download Uber. So when out of all this confusion, we got into the cabs, people will tell you not to get into the black cabs and um, they are called black taxis. And that's how our cost skyrocketed, like not skyrocketed, but it was a huge cost, you know, like if it was an Uber, the journey would be like 50 pounds or 70. But then you coming, taking this black taxi, it's more than 100 pounds, which I would say is a lot of money for someone who's moving abroad, who's used all their money for relocation, you know. So that was my journey. And I had to stop over in London with my friend and then I would need to get another flight uh, after a day to, re to move to Northern Ireland where I'm currently based. So I currently work in Belfast. If you want to know how I got recruited into this role and just uh, around moving to the UK or Northern Ireland, I can do a video of how I got interviewed and I got this role. Let me just give... Um, a few tips that I've learned in my journey or a few pointers or eye openers that can help anyone out there who's thinking of relocating specifically to the UK or anywhere abroad, you know, from Africa. So the first thing is, um, I've touched about it, it's the financial aspect. You need to have money. You need to have money to pay for the visa fees. You need to have money to pay for the flight. You need to have money to move around in that country before they reimburse you, they're reimbursing you for all the relocation costs or before you get paid the first salary. You also need money if you're settling here with your family, for flights with a family, for food, for clothing. I came through a, towards the end of winter, but it was still cold. It was still at negative one. It even snowed the first the second week I was here. So these are things that happened. And every time I would go out, I was taking money without money coming in because they would uh, reimburse me after a month. But even so, the flight money has to come from your pocket. We are talking hundreds of thousands. So you need to sit down, think about this. There's another thing, you need to find a house. Finding a house means you pay for the first deposit from your pocket. Imagine the deposit depends on how much your house is and most houses they are uh, around 800 pounds to you know whatever cost to 3000 if you're in London so looking at this cost you need to actually have money have be liquid I would say just be liquid if you're planning to move abroad or have an asset that you can easily sell within a week and be liquid you know the other thing I would say is be flexible or be ad learn how to adapt. It's your adaptability that will help you survive in this new environment. No one else is gonna help you. It's how fast you adapt, how easily you adapt to the changing environment. It could be the cold, yes, but other things are like the transport system. It's totally different from what we know. You know, these are the things you need to like think about. Okay, do you have a smartphone? that you can get google maps on so you can move around easily because you can't be stopping everyone asking oh, how how do i get point x y and z you know everyone will be like i don't even know that place just google it you know so have a smartphone learn ask the other thing is do your research research really helps like within the adaptability they have to correlate to the research how much research have you done to know how you're going to move from point a to z like for us we didn't do much research and that's why we took a black taxi instead of just um, downloading bolt or uber and ordering a cab as easy as that things like that then i would say the third thing work on your communication Communication is very important. It will get you places. And now I've said you can't just be asking people things, but even in your workplace, there are things that Googling about 
does not like you some things you can't just google about it's easier asking someone learn how to communicate in different ways here there is diversity there are diverse cultures there are people from all points of africa people from all points of the world um i would say how's the journey been it's been amazing um I've been able to go back to London, reconnected with a few friends that we used to work with before while we were in Kenya, some acquaintances, and it's amazing. So I have photos of me uh, here uh, going to the Tower Bridge, London Eye, and I've also managed to tour Northern Ireland as a whole. You know, the Giant Schools, there are so many tourist attractions that you also take advantage off i just want to say this when you move to a new environment <clears throat> with those three tips you'll be able to form a community of yourself you'll be able to meet amazing people that you will cherish in your life having them just around you is amazing i'm sorry about that so that's all i can say this journey has been full of excitement have been full of um, fears has been full of learning relearning and it's still a journey i'm still learning i'm still adapting to my new job adapting to my new environment i'm still uh, doing fun things i've managed to form a community of friends i've i've gone to facebook and that's the first point i went to to look if there are kenyans there to find a community so every other kenyan holiday i get celebrated with people around here you know so that's it uh actually I, I don't know i miss home you actually miss home sometimes but that's normal and then you'll adapt you'll just learn you miss home food good thing is there is amazon you can always get ugali flour there i know ugali is important if you're kenyan Come with your Kenyan spices, really important. Don't forget to carry your Kenyan spices. Chai masala, bring your Kenyan masala tea. It's so hard to find that here, you know. And cook your pilau, cook your chapati. I just, sorry. So, and um, cook your pilau, cook your chapati. I have a video of me here that I posted on TikTok. I hosted a few of my friends. Uh, they came from London. I hosted them. We had a Kenyan meal. Some of the friends who live here. And that's that's how I have a small community of people I can go to. So you know, being alone is not easy. No man is an island, and that's why you need to look for a community that you can lean on. You need to look for people, talk to people, befriend them, especially people who are going through the same journey as you. People who've relocated. I think you'll have the same kind of thinking, especially if they relocated from anywhere. There are so many people relocated from India to here, from Africa to here. Talk to them. Get yourself out there. No one is going to take you from your house and try and build a relationship with you. You have to go out. Coming from someone who enjoyed staying in a house to watch TV shows and now enjoy walking outside, this world changes you. This um, new environment will change you, adapt and move with the change. Yeah, so comment down below which video would you like to see next. Um, I was thinking of maybe doing um, a house tour of my house here and if it's something you want to like uh, have a look at, I can do a house tour. Uh, I was also thinking of talking of um, about how I got to get this job here. If that is something you want to hear about and the fun places to visit in Northern Ireland, the Kenyan community here and also in the wider UK. And if you also want to hear similar stories from my friends who have the same career, um, yeah. I'd be happy to share. So please subscribe to my channel, comment below, and let's move along this journey with. Cheers.